Living in our camper van this winter was really challenging. We were dwelling in the Lake District, a national park in the north of England. It's an enchanting place where winding roads are tucked between endless hills and still waters. The beauty of these landscapes kept us rooted there for three months, but after so long living in freezing temperatures without any heating or hot water, we were longing to feel effortlessly warm. So, as the bluebells and wild garlic sprouted, marking the transition into spring, we began preparing for a three-month trip to Europe. To the woods, carefully step, this is their home. This trip, we plan to head back to the Alpine Mountains in southern France, which is a place that has really stolen our hearts. We're drawn back to this part of the world year after year, but in the past, we've always arrived in late summer, once the snow has already melted off the mountains and the petals have begun to fall off the flowers. This will be the first time that we'll be there for spring and we can only imagine how beautiful it will be in the Alps, watching the spring bloom ripple out along the mountain sides. And so the preparation for our next European road trip began. First, we took all our winter clothes out of the van and replaced them with summer ones. We then emptied out each and every cupboard to give them all a well-needed deep clean before finally repacking all our belongings into place again. We booked a ferry to transport our camper van overseas to France and we were all ready to set off on our big journey when all of a sudden we got a call from Aaron's family that changed our plans completely. Out of nowhere, Aaron's dad Simon was diagnosed with stage 4 pancreatic cancer. Nothing could have prepared us for that state of breathless shock. Simon had gone to the doctor about his shoulder pain, and we never expected that a terminal illness would be the reason behind it. We immediately cancelled our ferry to Europe and made our way to be with Aaron's family in London. Their driveway would be our park-up spot for the foreseeable future. The following days were an absolute blur. My dad was deteriorating so fast and we all came together as a family to care for him at home like he wanted. The cancer nurses who came to visit let us know that Dad unfortunately didn't have much time left. In his last days, we did all we could to bring him some happiness and comfort, like playing him some of the songs that he taught me when I was little. The only way to describe that time was like being told that your plane is going to crash and there's nothing you can do to stop the inevitable. At first you're gripped by panic and stress, but you realise that panicking isn't going to change the outcome. Perhaps at some point there comes an awareness that, if these are the last few moments, what still remains important? Feelings of stress were replaced with a strange kind of acceptance as we learnt to cherish the time we had left with Dad. I had overwhelming gratitude amongst the intense sorrow as the flowers and cards piled up and the reality of it all set in. I was living in the present more than I would ever done before, soaking up every last moment. At times, it was strangely and unexpectedly beautiful. And during those last few days, we couldn't help but wonder Perhaps suffering exists to help us remember what's important at the core of our lives, to remind us to live in the present, to practice gratitude and to show love, not just in moments of loss, but as often as we possibly can. 
We want to hold on to these principles of living and remember to practice them every day. Aaron's dad passed away peacefully at home just two weeks after we arrived in London. After a few weeks of deep grief and time with loved ones, we began to get back to our life on the road, carrying our new perspectives along with us in hopes to absorb our future adventures more fully than we did before. We went back out into nature, where our little home on wheels belongs, spending time parked up in a forest, just readjusting to life on the wild side after several weeks in the suburbs. We had so missed rolling up our curtains each morning to reveal an enchanting new pocket of wilderness that we'd never seen before. Taking breakfast easy whilst a gentle breeze filters through the van as we discuss where we might want to explore later in the day. Or simply laying in and watching little moments of nature play out from the comfort of our bed. The wounds of the past months are still very raw and the healing will take some time. As we continue on with our life on the road, there will inevitably be moments where the memory of it all will be overwhelming. But we know that my dad would want us to keep moving and explore new lands. So that's what we'll do. We're currently wild camping in Oxfordshire, in the south of England, where the pace of the world feels wonderfully slow. There's countryside all around us, but we picked this spot by the river because Laura's been itching to do lots of wild swimming this summer. As I swim, Aaron keeps a close eye through the windows whilst writing tales and songs about the scenery and creatures around us. Luffy is a little anxious when I'm not there, so she's always happy when I return home to the van after a swim. I love those first few minutes wrapping up warm after emerging from the cold water. There's something extra special when moments of discomfort meet moments of comfort, like the very first bite of a meal when you're really hungry or when you step into a hot shower after a few days of camping. Those few seconds or minutes of relief make you feel so grateful for the simplest of things that you had been longing for. And this is one of our favourite things about van life. Every day there are inconveniences and discomforts, but they make us all the more appreciative for little joys that we previously just took for granted. It feels good to be back parking up on the wild side again. 